Power just at Stonex Group. She joins us now uh, live. Uh, Catherine, good to see you and appreciate your time. Thanks for staying up to, to do this uh, with us. So I, I want to know, first off, what, what do you make of earnings season so far? Because, I mean, last year was all about multiple expansion. This year it's going to be down to earnings. How are they looking so far? You're so right about that. Last year, uh, we saw uh, S&P up more than 25%, banking on um, earnings, keeping pace with that multiple expansion. I mean, so far, so good. My, my concern, I think, is more going forward. How tight of a pinch are corporates going to be with regard to margin pressure, given the elevated input costs, both from labor, which here in the United States remains very, very uh, expensive, and, uh, and there's still a shortage of it, um, energy costs and real interest rates, which are now positive and uh, pretty restrictively so. So my concern is going forwards with regard to earnings growth. That said, I will add one thing, Martin, which is that it's a historical or would be a historical anomaly to outside of recession, outside of, of recessions having two years of negative earnings growth. And that's um, that's unlikely to happen. So I do think earnings grow this year about 10 percent. Last year we had uh, earnings uh, growth negative banking on this double digit um, earnings for 2024. And it better it better come through. All right, fingers crossed, uh, right? So you talked about the cost of capital, the other, uh, excuse me, the cost of labor. The other thing companies are struggling with, and you just uh, uh, talked about it, uh, with uh, yields, uh, it's the cost of capital, right? And, you know, yes. wasn't that long ago, five, six months ago, when we had the 10 back in October up at 5%, we're at around 460 right now. Is it a stretch of the imagination to think that we could get up to five pretty easily? I don't think we're far from that, and it certainly isn't a stretch, especially if we continue to see these upside surprises to inflation, keeping the Fed high for an extended period of time. If that's the case, then corporations do see that, that squeeze on their margins. And if they have a high cost of capital, high cost of labor, and high cost of energy, um, then the first thing to cut back on may be a reversal, Martin, of what we saw, which was, which was that phenomenon of job hoarding. So you could see some um, job layoffs, some layoffs coming in the fore uh, just to shore up that bottom line. That, I think, is the biggest concern from my end. I think the market consensus continues to be higher for longer, is consistent with a soft landing. Yes, to a point. If you have high real rates for an extended period of time, that should and probably will start to infringe on consumption, which here in the United States is the main driver of GDP growth. I think the, the bigger risk has been reflation and overheating. So the best possible scenario, Mandy, from my perspective, is a soft landing. Up to this point, we haven't seen that. Up to this point, we've seen robustness across the board. So if, in fact, we do get that perfect Goldilocks scenario, not too hot, not too cold, so we're not in recession, but we're not overheating, that is idyllic for, for the, the Federal Reserve. And if that can be combined with ongoing disinflation, that's the best possible scenario for, uh, for the economy and definitely for markets. Gold has had a tremendous rally, Mandy, and this has been our top at Stonex, our top performing um, trade uh, view for 2024. And we just recommended realizing profits because it's so long in the tooth. It's such a consensus view. It's so overbought at current levels. I do think structurally there is upside to gold, especially when you look at ETF holdings of said precious metal. Most of this upside rally has been because of central bank accumulation of gold. So once you get you know, those retail guys piling into the ETF trade, I think I think it has more upside. But my view was, hey, let's start to take some profits and look for better entry points. And I specifically like gold miners. When you look at the divergence in return between gold and gold miners, there's a lot of room to run for miners. So I think there's more upside there than in the than in the specific gold commodity. Yeah. Yeah, that's the geopolitical risk. I think um, I think that's that's a tough one. If we do get a, a closure of the Strait of Hormuz, God forbid, but if that were to occur, we would see an inordinate impact on inflation here in the United States, as well as a negative impact on economic growth. What we've concluded at Stonex is that you know, a, a closure of that strait were it to occur because of some geopolitical conflagration in that in that area of the world could increase oil prices by some whopping $40. So that would be both inflationary and recessionary, which could potentially lead to stagflation. So I think that's a big risk um, for the economy and for inflation for this year.
So, you know, we've talked about uh, two big risks uh, to uh, the equity market right now. One is the 10 shooting back up to five, and the other is potentially $100 oil, which is likely to be what happens if indeed Iran does do a, a soft blockade of the Strait of Hormuz, right? Uh, in, in terms of the Fed right now, uh, everybody has been pricing out cuts uh, and even the start. We're, I think they're pushing it back to maybe September. I've even heard uh, after the elections in, in December and p potentially even no cuts. What, what do you think is going to happen? I think if they don't cut before September, they're not going to cut until after the election, if that. So the chance that the Fed does not cut at all this year is, in my view, pretty high. Um, they're probably not going to cut in June or July. I think September is too close to the election. So uh, were inflation prints to give them the room to initiate a rate cut, which still is to be determined, um, that probably wouldn't come um, until after the election, possibly in November or December. And that, I think, will have uh, repercussions to equity risk premium because you have the two-year note trading at, a, I don't know, about 5%, but you have, you, you have equity risk premium uh, below that. So um, so it's not a good scenario for equities, and I think that uh, it could be a volatile market for equities going forward, which is why we have been recommending in Stonex those purchase of put options, both on the S&P index and on the technology index, and that's worked pretty well for our clients.